I don't know how many people in South Africa typically look at this, but in the agricultural sector that we pride ourselves with, we have over 36 commodities and value chain that power this farming economy that we typically talk about. But there are a few that typically dominate the conversation because of the scale of the planting of those commodities. And one of those is the grain industry. And of course, our staple crop in South Africa, Southern Africa is maize. And this year, the 2024-25 production season, it's one of those years that we've generally viewed it as a recovery period. Because remember, in 2024, it was a tough year in Southern Africa. We were hit by the droughts. We saw all of the numbers of the crop losses in Zimbabwe. We heard the stories of the crop losses in Zambia and many other countries in the Southern Africa region. And even here in South Africa, we had our own difficulties. Although our maize crop losses were not as huge as what we saw across the Southern Africa region. And one of those things was, of course, because of the seed cultivars that we use in South Africa. We use what I would call an improved seed cultivars. It can be available also in the Southern African countries, but their governments would have to approve that in order for the farmers in those areas to have access into those seed cultivars. But the point is that the improved seed cultivars do also contribute to better yields and they can withstand harsher climatic conditions better than the typical traditional seeds that any other countries are, are using in the continent. But the key thing this time around in the current season was this year of a recovery. I mean, in Zambia, numbers are looking great for this current season. Zimbabwe, not yet there. It will still remain a net importer in maize production, but the numbers are much better than what we saw in 2024. But the key thing that we haven't looked at the most in South Africa is the quality. I mean, the crop is looking good. The numbers are there to speak for themselves. We are expecting a maize crop in South Africa of about 14.8 million tons. Now, you take that crop, you think about how much maize South Africa uses. We use for ourselves about 12 million tons of maize. That is divided between human consumption as well as the maize that we use in animal feed uh, for the poultry sector, livestock industry, you, you name it. That's how much maize we use as South Africa. But of course then, it is also two varieties. You have white maize and yellow maize. Yellow maize mainly for animal feed and white maize mainly for human consumption. Although in typical times, you can take white maize and put it in an animal uh, product, in animals uh, feed side. And of course, we have seen in the past, especially those who are senior South Africans, who are around in the 90s, that even yellow maize was once used in human consumption in times of drought in South Africa. But we are not there. We don't want to invoke those memories. But the challenge that we are seeing creeping up in South Africa this time around is the issue of quality. Uh, if you think about the previous seasons, about 90% or so of the maize that farmers would deliver on the silos, it will be what we call the first grade of maize, which means that the quality is great. But this time around, we are seeing a disparity on that. I mean, in the white maize that has been delivered so far, the farmers have delivered around about 8.3 million tons of maize out of the 14.8 million tons that we are expecting, which means that there's still a lot more maize to be delivered. This maize that is delivered as a share of all of our harvest that we are expecting, it's about 56%. So there's still a lot of work to happen in the fields in South Africa. But what differentiate this season that we are in with the previous ones is the fact that we came from the drought that I talked about of 2024 to a season that we saw it as a recovery. Excellent rains across the country, but those rains were too excessive and much more prolonged than we would have liked. We saw South Africa receiving rain through to April, which is an unusual up until the end of April. And at that time, we started signaling to say, what will this mean for the yields as well as the quality? And the yields does seem to be looking fairly decent because if anything, the South African Crop Estimate Committee actually increased or lifted the estimate of the size of the yield that we are expecting. But the quality is proving to be a challenge. Now, 66% of the white maize that has been delivered, um, we are told that it is the first grade, but the second one is what we would call the second grade or B grade of that maize that we have. And that, if you compare it with the previous seasons, the previous seasons we would have been plus 90% of that. So if you are a farmer, 
this does worry us in terms of the profitability of what's uh, happening. But for many of you that are watching this, probably as South Africans working in other industries, this is not something, no, not something to worry about because in essence, we still have the good crop. This maize may st will still be good for milling. And of course, on a food inflation and a food availability side, we are looking great as a country. But I think it is important to recognize that these prolonged rainfall, they have caused some quality issues. Now, if you think about South Africa, I don't know how many people usually reflect onto this, but we don't just plant white maize, yellow maize everywhere in the country. The eastern regions of South Africa are the ones that you would consider the belts for yellow maize, while the western regions of South Africa is what you consider for white maize. So if you think about the rainfall, how much rain we received in Bumalanga, KZN, Eastern Free State, those are the regions that are mainly yellow maize. And then as you think about the Western Free State, Northwest and the others, that's for white maize. It is in those regions where I think we've received more late rains than what we saw in Bumalanga, which is why on a quality discrepancies that you will see there. Because I mean, look, on the maize that is delivered, if you think about yellow maize, yellow maize, um, the first grade is about 88% compared to what is on white maize, which is around 66%. So that tells you then about those difficulties of the excessive rain. But we can all, and I think the farmers themselves, they are still, of, they will be of the view that we are all very thankful that we did receive the good rains. The yield did recover in South Africa to an extent that we are expecting now this crop of 14.8 million tons when it comes to maize. But of course, we have excellent crop also in other aspects. I mean, if you think about the oil seeds, the various grain in total, all of our summer grains and all seeds, they are over 18 million tons. So we are looking fairly at a decent season in South Africa. But I think the quality issue is the one that we need to reflect on a bit. And many people that watch the maize markets, you may have noticed that uh, in the past, in the recent weeks, we've started in July to see maize prices even creeping up, especially white maize, at over 5,000 rands per ton. One of the reasons is these are these quality concerns that people are talking about. And the other aspect that people were, of course, worried about is the fact that the deliveries are late. Because while we talk about uh, recovery, good rainfall, the reality is this. The season started probably a month or so behind than the typical period. We went for a longer period without actually receiving the rain that we needed. And when we had received the rain, it was much more prolonged than usual. Because if you think about South Africa, farmers typically start planting and preparing the land somewhere between the end of September going into October, especially in the eastern regions of South Africa. From mid-October, that is what you would call the typical planting window all the way to mid-November. And then if you are in the western regions of the country, you're thinking about mid-November to mid-December, that you would, what you would call optimal planting window for white maize and to a certain extent even sunflowers. The reason we call it optimal planting window is because in the past, that's when we would have received excellent rains to start preparing the land. But it also means that the crop would mature much faster before we actually get the frost at the end of the season. Because if we get frost at the end of the season, that too brings some quality issues. But this time around, we were fortunate there was not much frost in, in many regions of this country, but the issue was though with those prolonged rainfall. That is what is contributing to this, as well as what has contributed to the slow than unusual harvest, which is why things are looking this way. But generally, we still of the view that, look, the farmers will be able to deliver the crop that the crop estimate committee is forecasting. So we are still in that decent season. The other countries that we will, of course, be looking to see what the quality looks like. It's in Zambia, Zimbabwe, because these are all of the important Southern African countries when it comes to maize consumption in the case of Zimbabwe and production in the case of Zambia. Because the quality there, we hope it is decent because Zambia will be feeding the Southern Africa region alongside South Africa when we were thinking about the exports. Because remember, Zimbabwe, while their maize is recovered, we still think that they may be importing about 700,000 tons of maize. Last season, they got a lot of maize from South Africa. This time around, I think they will get some from South Africa and some from Zambia. And South Africa will still be at a position to export, we think, 
over 2 million tons of maize. Because remember, if our consumption is about 12 million tons and we are expecting a maize crop of 14.8 million tons, it does mean then that we'll still have a bit more maize to put out there in the market. So that's how the grain season on what I would call 2024, 25 production season looks. And of course, if you think about the soybeans and the others, we have quite a decent crop in there. In soybeans, we have the second largest soybean crop uh, on record. And the interesting thing is that on a soybean, the quality looks fairly decent, which again, proves the point that I was making earlier. Because remember, we do uh, produce a lot of our soybeans in the eastern regions of South Africa, which is where we also have yellow maize. And the yellow maize quality is better. And the challenge that we are facing is largely on white maize. And white maize is planted in the same regions where we plant also a lot of our sunflower seed. So those are the dynamics and the variations on rainfall and the timing and all of that in South Africa. So many South Africans who are not in farming, you can see that the farmers in South Africa have to contend with quite a lot of things, waiting for rain, sunshine, stock theft, uh, grain theft, and many other problems that are there and planning for these uncontrollable variables that are there, which are linked to the weather um, matters. But the other challenge that I think for the farmers now, we have to be thinking about is the 2025, 26 production season. Because yes, the current one is at its tail end. But remember, from mid-October going forward, we have to be starting the new season, which means that now by the time you're watching this, we are probably two months or so to the next season in South Africa. And we have to start be thinking about what will that season look like. From a weather perspective, what we are receiving from many people that uh, forecast the weather, it looks like we will have a generally normal weather conditions. I'm looking at the forecast here that we are having. There's perhaps maybe not a strong possibility of La Nina, not a strong possibility of El Nino, but looking really on a normal weather distribution. And I think then if we get regular rainfall, that should still be a favorable season in South Africa. And I know many people will probably complain about this because we have gotten used to this period of moving in cycles between El Nino, which actually brings drought in Southern Africa, and La Nina, which brings above normal rainfall in South Africa. And from the 20, 2020 up to 2023, we were in a cycle of La Nina receiving above normal rainfall. And of course, 2024, we were hit by El Nino, which is why the poor crop this time around, we were in a La Nina period, which is above normal uh, rainfall. So we may be going on a more normalizing period. And I think that the normal rainfall in South Africa would still deliver a decent crop, especially because soil moisture in general, I think it's at healthy levels. So that's the one aspect the farmers will be looking at, the weather on what it looks like. So far, I think the conditions are promising. The other important variable that we consider is of course the input cost. And one of the biggest input costs in farming in South Africa is fertilizer. Did you know that for a grain farmer, about 35% of their input cost is fertilizer? And in South Africa, we import about 80% of our annual fertilizer consumption. We consume just over 2 million tons of fertilizer. And the grain industry is the biggest user, as well as a field crop, as well as a field crop such as sugarcane. Everything is field crop when you think about grains, all seeds, and, uh, and, and sugarcane. But I think the grains, as well as sugar, are the biggest users when you're thinking about um, that fertilizer consumption. And fertilizer accounts for the biggest share of their input costs. This time around, the international factors point to increasing cost of fertilizers. I'm looking at this and it looks like as we are watching this in July, 2025, the fertilizer prices internationally, they are up by plus 10% on a year on year basis. And of course, what will matter in South Africa is also the rent to the US dollar. If it remains fairly firm at the levels that we were seeing at least somewhere around 17 rand 80 or so, one would think then that those increases in input costs will not be as large. But if the rand weakens and the international fertilizer prices remain fairly high, that means then on the input cost side of the farmers in South Africa, when the 2025, 26 production season start. That may be a slightly difficult period. And you pair then that period of a higher input cost with this period that we are emerging from or we will be closing, which is this 
of the quality issues on a crop. This does mean then that although the grain farmers are having a better crop, uh, they are not necessarily getting richer, as many people would think, okay, these farmers are coining it. No, it's not getting there. It's really about sustaining the farming entities that we have and ensuring that we deliver the food security for South Africa as well as for the regions. Because remember, the South African farmers, all of what we do, it's not only just for South Africa. Uh, the grain and the oil seeds industry and many of our commodities do a lot in stabilizing food security across the Southern Africa region. Uh, we produce plus 20% of the maize in the Southern Africa region and exporting that. And it's a similar and even much more robust numbers when you think about other commodities. So a better season and a sustainably uh, financially sound agricultural sector is good for the entire Southern Africa region. And the other important aspect we need to think about this time around is the Southern Africa region in general, and perhaps you can even say the Sub-Saharan Africa region. Because for many years, we have grown used to receiving some aid from international organization. And one of those was the World Food Program receiving uh, much of its funds from the US aid. And the US aid has been slashed now uh, with the new administration in the US, which means then that the World Food Program is no longer as financially sound as what we've seen in the past. And going into the next season now, I do think that the African governments should do whatever possible to ensure that they support their farmers, they expand the grain production, so that if we run into some challenges later in 2026, we have a robust food supply in the Southern Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa region. Because no one is coming to help us. We need to help ourselves. And one way of helping ourselves is making sure that we expand the agricultural production and we are able to have a decent uh, crop. Because if the weather conditions are looking decent for South Africa, that applies across the Southern Africa region. Uh, which means then we must continue taking advantage of all of this. This is all to say there are a number of factors that are affecting this sector, but things aren't looking up going into the next season. There will be pressures on the farmers, but if you are a South African or someone in the Southern Africa region thinking about this from a consumption side, you can sleep soundly knowing that the food supply at least are fairly secure in this country and for the neighbors that we're exporting to. And with that, folks, let's wrap it there for this week. And as always, please share this episode, subscribe to our channel and follow us across socials. Thanks for watching.